I'm Bob Duhamel, and today we are going to talk about the units of measure used for electronics. The scientific world uses the International System of Units, or SI units, for making measurements. So let's take a look at these units and see how the modern definitions for electrical units are derived from them. So we start out with the base units, which everything else is derived from, and these are kilograms, meters, and seconds. So first of all, what is a kilogram? The kilogram was originally defined as the mass of one liter of water, or one cubic decimeter of water. The problem with this is that water from different places with different amounts of salinity or other dissolved minerals will have different weights. So when it came to very precise measurements, using a liter of water was not adequate for defining the kilogram. So today, the kilogram is the only unit of measure that is still defined by a specific artifact. And that is a particular piece of platinum iridium alloy that is stored in a vacuum in Serres, France. There are proposals to redefine the kilogram by methods that can be reproduced in the laboratory. The leading contender is based on the Planck constant. But today, the kilogram is still defined by that particular piece of platinum iridium alloy in France. The meter was originally defined as one ten millionth of the distance between the Earth's pole and the equator. You can already see a problem with that. How do you measure that? Can you step it off on the ground? Can you measure it from space? That's going to be pretty hard to measure with any kind of consistency. So today, the meter is defined as the distance that light travels in one two hundred ninety-nine millionth, seven hundred ninety-two thousandth, four hundred fifty-eighth of a second in a vacuum. The second was originally defined as one eighty-six thousand four hundredth of a mean solar day. In other words, one day contains 86,400 seconds. But this is a problem because the speed of the Earth is not uniform. In fact, when the earthquake that caused the 2004 tsunami happened, that changed the arrangement of plates of the Earth enough that a slowdown in the Earth's rotation was actually measurable. And the Earth's rotation is slowing down over time because of tidal effects from the Moon. So today, one second is defined as one thirty-one millionth 556 thousandth, 925th point nine seven four seven of the year 1900. Well, how are we going to measure that today? So the definition of a second today is the duration of 9,192,631,770 periods of the radiation corresponding to the transition between two hyperfine levels of the ground state of a cesium-133 atom. You can go measure that in your kitchen, I'm sure. Those base units, the kilogram, the meter, and the second, are used to define every other unit of measurement we use. Before we get to electrical units, we need to talk about a couple of other units. The first one is the Newton, which is a measure of force. The Newton is the amount of force required to accelerate a one kilogram mass at one meter per second per second. In other words, if I take a mass of one kilogram and put a force of one newton against it, after one second, that kilogram will be moving at one meter per second. After two seconds, it will be moving at two meters per second. After three seconds, three meters per second. So it constantly accelerates as I put that one newton of force against it. So once again, the newton is the force that will accelerate one kilogram at one meter per second per second or one meter per second squared, as you might hear it said. The next unit to talk about is the joule. The joule is the amount of work done when you apply one newton of force and move something one meter. So a joule is work, and work is force times distance. So we move anything one meter, and we've applied one newton of force to move it that one meter, we have done one joule of work. So a joule is one newton per meter. Our first electrical unit is the ampere, which is probably the easiest one to wrap our minds around because it is a measure of flow. And when we measure flow, we measure that by a volume of material over a certain time. Like we might have gallons per hour or cubic feet per minute. In electricity, we measure elementary charges per second. An electron carries one elementary negative charge. So an ampere is essentially defined by a certain number of electrons passing by in one second. And that number is 6 septillion, 241 quintillion, 
509 quadrillion 480 trillion electrons per second. Now, just to make this easier, we usually define this as 6.24 times 10 to the power of 18 electrons per second. Our next measurement is the Coulomb, which is a measurement of a quantity of electricity. And that's pretty simple. A Coulomb was once defined as, well, what's that big number I had? 6.24 times 10 to the 18th charges. But that has been redefined to be the quantity of electricity carried by one amp in one second. Well, that still comes out to a quantity of 6.24 times 10 to the power of 18 electrons. So a Coulomb is a quantity or a volume of electricity measured as 6.24 times 10 to the power of 18 electrons. Next comes the watt, which is a measurement of power. And we have power produced anytime we produce heat, mechanical motion, or electromagnetic radiation, meaning light or radio waves. So that's what power is, and power is measured in watts. And heat and mechanical motion are really the same thing because heat is produced and conveyed by mechanical motion of atoms. So we don't have power unless we have either heat, mechanical motion, or electromagnetic radiation. So when we calculate power and electricity, it's voltage times current. But we can sometimes multiply our voltage times our current and not have any power produced, such as in inductors. We can measure voltage and we can measure current, but inductors do not produce heat, mechanical motion, or electromagnetic radiation, except as a waste product that is not actually produced by the inductance. And power, although in electricity we calculate it by voltage times current, or current squared times resistance, the actual definition is the production of energy at one joule per second. And now we come to the volt. The volt was originally the measure of the electromotive force produced by a Daniel cell, which was the standard battery used by telegraph systems in the late 1800s. It has gone through a number of definitions based on voltage produced by other cells, usually some fraction of a voltage produced by another cell. But today, the volt is defined by the electrical potential across two points, where between those points we are producing one watt with one amp of current flowing through there. So the volt is defined as one watt per amp. And that brings us to the ohm, and the ohm is simply defined by Ohm's law. The ohm is the resistance that produces one volt when there is one amp of current flowing through it. And now we come to the farad, which is a measure of capacitance. So a capacitor of one farad has the capacity where if we stuff in one coulomb of charge, so if we take 6.24 times 10 to the power of 18th electrons and stuff them into a capacitor, and after doing so, we find that capacitor has one volt of charge, that is a one farad capacitor. So a one farad capacitor is one in which we stuff in one coulomb of charge and get one volt. And the final electrical unit we're going to talk about is the Henry, which is a measure of inductance. This is probably the hardest one to wrap your mind around because a one Henry inductor produces one volt when we change the current by one amp per second. So if we have one amp going into an inductor, and then in the time of one second, we increase that to two amps, and then in another second, we increase that to three amps, and we keep increasing that by one amp per second, and it has a constant voltage of one volt across it, that is a one Henry inductor. Now, a little easier to wrap your mind around is that a one Henry inductor has the same capacity to store energy in its magnetic field as a one farad capacitor has to store in its electric field. So a one Henry inductor has the same energy capacitor, all things being equal, as a one farad capacitor. And the final unit of measure we're going to talk about is not electrical, but it's something that comes up in acoustics, which is related to electronics because we have audio amplifiers. And that unit is the Pascal, which is a measure of fluid pressure or a measure of air pressure. And the Pascal is defined as one newton per square meter. So you have a square meter and you put air pressure on there so that entire square meter has one newton of force on it. That would be one pascal of pressure. And 20 micropascals or 21 millionths of a pascal is the threshold of human hearing. Now if we take a sound wave that is producing a force on our eardrums that sort of averages at 20 micropascals or 21 millionths of a pascal, that sound will be just barely audible. 
So the threshold of hearing is a sound that produces 20 micropascals. So those are our units of measure, and I hope that that has taken a little bit of the mystery out of all these numbers that we throw around when talking about electronics. If you found this video useful and informative, please give me a thumbs up down below. It really helps the channel. And subscribe because that not only informs you when I put new videos up, but it really helps the channel also. And a big thank you to my patrons at Patreon. I could not make these videos without your support. If you want to help me put these videos online and keep real vocational education free at vocademy.net, you can go to Patreon slash join slash vocademy and pledge your support. And again, a big thank you to my patrons who make this possible, and a big thank you to everyone for watching.